What is cracking guys? Today we are working on a very, very special YZ300 project. If you're new, welcome. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com. And if you haven't yet been formally introduced, allow me to introduce you to Project Disruptor, our 2009 YZ300 build. Truth be told, I named this bike Disruptor because long before it ever even existed, I had this image of it in my head. It pretty much looks exactly how I thought it would before I extracted it from my brain, and I just knew it would be something that would disrupt dirt bike building as we knew it. And so having said all that, it's actually been a couple years since I started this build, and still, there's nothing else quite like it. Now, situational hangups, moves, and all other inconsistencies aside, the bike really has been a bolt by bolt, piece by piece, super in-depth project, and I'm talking down to the most finite screw or spring, I guarantee I have touched it. And if I'm being perfectly honest with you and myself, my skill set almost needed to catch up with this bike build, this vision I had. I wanted a completely black and gray bike and that was absolutely it no other color and let me tell you it is extremely hard to do but some of the methods i've used including some that are pretty much unconventional in bike building have allowed me to pretty much nail that look and that's just another reason i love bike building thoughts become things if you let them this is a perfect example of that but there was an unbelievable there is still is an unbelievable amount of trial and error here because some of these methods i had never done before i was just trying as i went and so there's a lot of learning involved with that and today of course we're going to go through some of those methods with a very specific specific piece of the bike I want to trick out with you guys. And so overall, there's just a lot of patience, errors, and repeats involved with doing something like this. A lot of one step forward, two steps back. But guess what? I'm still making it happen. The bike looks sick, and Rome, of course, wasn't built in a day. And furthermore, for you guys, nobody gave me permission to do this. And I only mention that because you can do something just as insane or even crazier if you put your mind to it. It's just that most people won't because they're waiting to be validated by somebody else. But have no fear. You can literally tackle anything you want lack of resources aside it doesn't really matter you just have to put your mind to it as cliche and stupid as it sounds sometimes so now that you have a little download on project disruptor here why don't we go ahead and jump into today's topic and the part I would love to trick it out with you so check this out guys today I want to go ahead and finish tricking out this electron carburetor as you can kind of tell it predates the new Billitron the electron Billitron which I will link down below for you guys this is a 38 HB that's how long ago I started this project. I've probably had this carburetor for two years. Now, as you guys can see, I have completely deconstructed this carburetor. I have painted the body. I've swapped all the screws for black ones, painted things like the choke nut and all the hose guides. There's just one problem, this clear float ball. It just does not jive with this project. Is it offensive? Not entirely. Does it still look cool? I think so. It just doesn't work with this bike. And so today I'm going to try and attempt with you guys to turn this clear float bowl black. And what's really exciting is that if it works, it should still be like a see-through, very translucent black. And I think that would look pretty killer. And of course it will match the bike so much better if I can pull this off. If I screw it up, not really worried about it. I'll hit up my boys at Electron ask him kindly for a new flow bowl so I can try again. And in addition to that, I also wanna try and do all the vent lines. They're clear, so this might also look a lot like the bowl if we can pull this off. And so if you're wondering, how are we gonna pull this off? Well, we're gonna try and use a little bit of RIT dye in black, of course. This is actually for clothing. And truth be told, I was experimenting with this stuff a lot before this Quantum Gray Revolution kit came out for the Yamaha. I was mixing black with blue and some sandstone colors. I had a big, big pot because I was like, I want a gray bike. No gray plastics existed for the YZ at the time or any of the two strokes. I figured I'd have to make my own. I bought a huge cooking pot. I bought a burner. I was boiling water. I was trying to dip big pieces of plastic in it. And in the nick of time, this kit came out. I was so, so relieved. And it is hands down one of my absolute favorite Yamaha body kits to date. I'll link it down in the description below for you guys. Comes in eight colorways and includes a fuel tank. Anyways, I'm so glad this actually came out because it was a huge nightmare and pretty expensive to try and dye all those plastics when there was no gray. Just imagine trying to dye a front fender, only being able to get half of it into this pot, try and flip it over, and if you could pull it off, doing the rest of the pieces, rear fender, gas tank, all that stuff, and trying to make them match is an absolute nightmare. At any rate today, guys, we are going to attempt to turn these hoses and this bowl black. Pray for us, we're gonna be using the scientific method around and find out. So let's go guys, I'm excited. Once this carburetor is finally done, I can stuff it back in the bike, put the shock in in the air box, and I'll be done with the middle section of the bike. Let's go. All right guys, you ready to pass or fail on this thing? See how it goes? I think this looks so amazing. 
Uh, it matches the bike so well. Can you imagine if we pull this off and we get this bowl nice and black? Let's see what we can do. We're gonna pop this thing out, head over to the bench, and we will look at and talk about some of the other items uh, we're about to use. All right, so here we go. I got these loose already. I did not want these to impression into this painted uh, bowl clamp because I didn't want them to get stuck, chip the paint, whatever it may be. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the bowl. And here are a few other items we have that I think we'll need. We of course have the RIT die. We're going to also use a little bit of acetone, about 10%. Uh, this is an eight ounce bottle. I'm gonna dump the entire thing into this pot. Stole this pot from my wife. We're gonna find out if she even watches my YouTube videos. So if she doesn't see the pot, serves her right. I'm keeping it. Got a temperature gun as well. We're gonna get the water up to a boil in the house and then I'm gonna bring it out, let it set for a while. I don't wanna melt the bowl. I don't know what it can handle. I do know their mill spec, so that's pretty cool. I've seen Brooks run one over with a Jeep before and it didn't break, so they're pretty tough. But like I said, I don't wanna melt the thing. We're gonna use a little bit of distilled water to mix all of this up with. And I may have been talking a little too fast, but about 10% acetone in this eight fluid ounce bottle is 0.8 ounces of acetone. So again, we're gonna use a scientific method. Probably just gonna wing it. I got some gloves. We're gonna keep my hands chemical free. We're also gonna keep our body oils off the part we're working on. A Little bit of brake clean and some rags. I can continuously clean the gloves. I'll probably use one of these to stir our little concoction up. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't really know how much of this water to use. We're using distilled water. We don't want any minerals in this just in case there's an adverse reaction to the part. I suppose I'll just dump the rest of this gallon in. It's almost a gallon. We'd want to make sure the part can be submerged. Stuff's only about a dollar a gallon. We'll go ahead and dump in our RIT dye. Ten percent acetone. There you go. Close enough. And guys, before I heat this up, you know what? Let's just give it a shot. It's already 90 degrees. It is super hot outside today. We're in shelter in the shop and it's still 90 degrees uh, liquid temperature. So we'll get that stirred up. And the whole idea behind the acetone here is to get the pores, so to speak, of the plastic to open up. It's probably not the correct terminology, but the acetone will help the part absorb more of the dye. Keep everything clean. Now we can go ahead and spin these screws off. Got our last screw here, and then Electron uses this bowl bracket to clamp the bowl into the carburetor body. So we'll pull that off. Rubber gasket, we're going to want to get that sucker out of there. Like so. And then real quick, I'm going to go ahead and bath this in a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water, just in case there's any oil from, you know, these parts in here, manufacturing process, whatever it may be. I'm sure I cleaned it off back when I painted this thing already but just one quick measure there. We'll go ahead and clean it. A little blow jay. We could of course now rinse this in distilled water as well, but I think that's good enough. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach a copper wire to it. I've been doing a lot of zinc plating and black bolt dipping as you guys can probably tell by looking at the bike. Uh, more information on that down in the description below. Got a nice clean wire. We're gonna go ahead and stick that through one of these screw holes or bolt holes. Hook it up so that it can't come off and then like I said we are 85. It's gone down a little bit. I'll take one good hard last look at it and uh, Let's see what happens. Fully submerged. Let that sit for about a minute. We'll come back and check on it together. All right, it's been about a minute. Let's check it out. Just see if anything is going on yet. Not really, not really surprised about that. It kind of has a bit of a, a tinge of black to it, but maybe it's just the stuff running off the part. Yeah, still pretty clear overall. So. Probably need to heat this up. Definitely wanted to give it a shot in case it wasn't necessary. Of course, I already put the acetone in it, so now I get to reek up the entire house when I put it on the stove. Super bummed. I had a hot plate for a while. I just got rid of it. That would have been perfect for this. I could have let it heat up out in the shop. So we'll give it a few more minutes, and then if we have to heat this up like we originally intended, then so be it. All right, guys, we hit the five minute mark. Let's see what's going on in there. Nothing really. 
still really white. So we're gonna go ahead and heat this up and then we'll try again. Ah, UPS. Ordering so much crap, I have no idea what it even is. Oh yeah, chain slider. I bought the wrong one initially on accident. We have, oh, there goes some zinc. We have a 2010YZ450 swing arm and link arm on this 09250. So I accidentally put the wrong slider on it for a YZ two stroke. Got this, I'm gonna take it apart and uh, paint it up. Reason being, this thing's all painted. It's just one piece, the spring's painted, everything. Uh, I'd like to take this apart blast everything clean blast the logos repaint them separately uh, repaint the spring and everything separately this is fine nobody would ever notice but uh i know it's that way so we're gonna do it right what else do we get uh, throttle housing rubber jacket uh, tank strap some brand new clamps for the air boot Let's see check this out that's cool they are probably zinc plated you guys want to dip this real quick and see if it takes? Yeah, let's go ahead and dip this real quick. I'm going to show you guys while we wait how I'm turning the hardware black. Now, first and foremost, the hardware or whatever component is needs to have a zinc coating on it because we're using black chromate and it is what uh, creates the chemical reaction of the zinc turning black. So if it's stainless steel or aluminum, this won't work. Uh, it's actually really simple. And again, I will link down below where you guys can find a, a bolt kit that I came up with for you to do your engine bolts and also where to get this product. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So throw it in a wire, hit it with some distilled water, just, just to sort of get it equal with the distilled water that's in this bucket with the chemical. And if it's got a good zinc coating, it's going to turn black in about one minute. If it doesn't, it sort of burns the part, uh, re reveals the steel and then it can rust. And if, when that happens, I actually have to blast it all clean Rezinc plate it and then I'll know for a fact that it has a good coat of zinc, but let's see what happens. Oh yeah, that turned black immediately. I've had amazing luck with Yamaha parts. Uh, the quality of the zinc and the coating of the zinc is just amazing. So that's been about maybe 15 seconds. We'll pull it out at about a minute and then uh, it, it'll kind of blow your mind. It's, it's pretty amazing. This is how I've done 95% of this bike, uh, save for, like I said, things that are stainless or things that are aluminum. All right, that's about one minute. There you have it. That came out perfectly, perfectly. So like I said, really good luck with Yamaha parts, uh, having a nice high quality coating of zinc, not a spotty coating where it turns it partially black and partially raw steel, but that is beautiful. And then of course you got to air dry it, otherwise it'll get hazy. But uh, if you guys want to learn more about that, Obviously, that's not what this video is about, but I'm glad I got to show you. Go ahead and check out the link in the description. Oh yeah, guys, that came out pretty much picture perfect. That will look so good on the bike. You probably won't even be able to tell because it'll be on a, a black uh, air boot. I got to do the other one for the intake as well, but yeah, pretty cool, right? Chemistry or something like that. All right, guys, we're up to about 130 degrees, so we will give it a shot. In she goes. All right, five minutes later from 130 in the house down to 124.8. So it's holding pretty steady because it's so damn hot outside. Let's see what did five minutes do for us. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Still completely clear when I wipe this off. Well, you know, I guess I shouldn't say absolutely nothing. It's still clear when I wipe it, but it does have a bit of a gray tinge to it. So I'm gonna take this back inside. I'm gonna get this even hotter, bring it back out. And we're just gonna keep doing this until this damn thing turns black, cause I don't quit. Yeah, guys, I was wrong. It is, it is starting to turn just slightly. It's almost got a little bit of blue going on. Even if I could get this gray, I would still be stoked. So, you know what, I think we're making the kind of headway we wanted. Uh, I just need to give it a little bit more time. Uh, I should know better by now than to be uh, impatient with any of these processes, especially ones I've never tried uh, on this particular part. So yeah, that thing's heating up and we're gonna give her another dunk. I think we're gonna be successful in our little uh, scientific method today. All right, guys, we are up at 170. So let's give this another try 
I think this is going to do the trick. In she goes. I'm going to go ahead and drop one of our hoses in there too. Just see what happens, you know? This whole thing is a test, right? So rotating it in so the hose fills with the fluid. See some bubbles come out. I am straight jacking all my wife's utensils today. I want to check on one of those hoses. Come on, where are you? Here's one. Still about 150 degrees. Now, I don't know if this turned or if it just has dye inside of it still. So we will find out. I mean, it's exactly what I was going for. It's like a gray kind of translucent black sort of color. Looks like a lot of the stuff drained out of the inside. Let's rinse this hose and see. Yeah, 150 isn't too hard to hang on to at least. It's not burning me by any stretch of the imagination. So yeah, let's rinse this out and see what it looks like. Almost has a bit of a green to it. Let's see what it looks like against the bike. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you like that or not. I'm not sure I'm sold on it, but everything's kind of that way the first time you see it. All right, guys, it's time for the reveal. Just to keep you in the loop, I did run this in the house. I did keep it at a constant 170 degrees, and we are probably approaching about 30 minutes. I wasn't giving it enough time or temperature in the beginning, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. I don't know what it looks like. Let's see how we did. Oh yeah, that is much, much darker. That is pretty much, that is pretty much what we were going for. I mean, I can't see it getting much darker than that. I think that's going to look a heck of a lot better than the clear. Maybe we'll run it again later, but for now, we're going to go ahead, pull the hoses out next, let this cool off. I want to assemble it and throw it into the bike with you guys because if you're like me, you're dying to see it all put back together right now. Let's grab a hose out of there. It's looking pretty black too. Of course, it is full of the uh, solution, but yeah, I can tell it is much, much darker. Uh, darker green than earlier on. Not too hot to touch. Let's get these outside, give them a rinse and see how we did. Oh man, I'm pumped on this. Check that hose out against a white background. It's kind of green still, but it is, man, it's pretty neutral between the black and gray color scheme we already have going. So we'll get it plugged into the carb and put back together and see how it all looks overall. Definitely a little bit green for sure. Worst case, we could just go to all black hoses. It's not really a big deal. That is looking pretty cool. That is pretty much what we were going for guys. It's a little, bluish greenish but you know what once you get it in there i don't think it's going to be uh discernible whatsoever could probably go darker probably give it more time i'm assuming that that's the case but for now i want to get this thing put back together and as you can see pretty huge difference it is still a little bit translucent i could probably also polish the plastic make it nice and shiny Maybe we'll do that down the road. Regardless, this was a step in the right direction. Let's go ahead and put this bowl back on. Then the clamp. Throw a couple screws in this bad boy. I gotta say, that is looking pretty bitchin'. Yeah, guys. Next step, hoses. All right, we got the power jet hose. Normally, that would go through the hose guide, but I'm gonna be taking this back apart. And we got a vent on one side. One last vent down low. And then these hoses would just slide through all these hose guides. They're still a little fat and swollen from all that heat. So I don't know if I'm sold on the hoses. I think they look kind of crappy. So I'll probably go with some black hoses on that. But either way, I want to see what this thing looks like in the bike with you guys. Go ahead and get her weaseled in there. And guys, I think that's mission accomplished on the float bowl. You gotta let me know what you think. I think that came out killer. Matches the bike, insane. It's a little bit blue-green if you get real, real close, but from about six inches away, it just looks black. So I'm pretty stoked on that all along. I think you guys can probably tell the hoses don't look that good though. They're just a little bit too green. It's kind of a cool military green, but um, you know, not gonna work on this project. Just go ahead and get those out of there now. Nobody likes ugly hose. 100% yes. That is what I'm going for these brass fittings and the fuel inlet fitting, those are gonna obviously get covered up by hoses. You won't see them. That's super cool. Got all the black screws in there. Got the black float bowl. I'm pumped on that. That came out so sick. How fun. Guys, this came out absolutely kick-ass and I am so pumped on it. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. And so I'll close with just a few things. One, 
go ahead and close your eyes, take whatever it is you are envisioning, and turn that shit into reality. You can totally do it. Get creative, make it happen. Figure out how to get it done. This bike is 100% that method. Number two, if you guys wanna check out some probably pretty embarrassing by today's MX Revival video standards, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right here. It'll kind of catch you up with what I've done so far. Don't forget to check out all the links and resources I've left for you in the description below. And until next time, guys, I really appreciate you watching and I will see you very soon.